So Alexis, we just finished up our housing for good interview and we talked about all this work you're doing for El Rio with the organization Bacinos and um, mentioned your biz Tucson write up where as an up and coming person to watch, one of 20 people highlighted in that magazine for 2024. And oh yeah, you do real estate. Yeah. <laughs> so the question always comes up when I'm interviewing people like this. How do you find the time? What is, how do you structure your day? What, what are tips that you have for other people to kind of give them some guidance on managing all of these different activities? Do you want me to take you through my whole day? <laughs> Typically? <laughs> sure. Um, so what I do, I'm, I'm actually really disciplined. I work from home. I've been working from home since I started in real estate. And I wake up, I go to the gym at 6 a.m. Once I'm back, I make a green juice every morning. I have a juicer, so I just press some vegetables through there, drink it get ready, drink coffee, and I'm in my home office by nine. So I don't have any, I don't get distracted. I think I get more distracted if I go into the actual office and try to work from there. I start chatting with people, um, find other things to do. So if I'm by myself or with my team member at my home office, I can really get into the zone. Um, so I split my day. I kind of do like a nine to five work schedule and of course sometimes I have to work past five if it's client showings that you know people get off work at five um so I really try to do the nine to five Monday through Friday with you know I know that sometimes I'll have to work on the weekends I break for lunch um if I get um anxious or need to step outside I'll go on a walk but I, I'm just really good about working when I need to and then stopping when I have to and I wasn't always like that. I used to work up until like 8, 9 p.m. and on the weekends as well. And I think I got to the point where I was grown in my career and also realizing that I needed to start taking care of myself and not just working Monday through Friday or sorry, Monday through Sunday um, up until 8 o'clock every day. What I realized is that when you tell your clients that you are having dinner with your family or that I'm working at an event for El Rio. They appreciate that and they understand it. They respect it. The mistake that I made is when I received a text message from a client at six in the morning or at 9 p.m., I responded and that turned into a going back and forth. Mm -hmm. um, but then I realized if I'm not starting my work day until nine, it's okay if I don't respond until nine o'clock. Otherwise, that's when you kind of throw your, your me time off and you get right into work. So all I heard was you have this magic green elixir, which you take every morning and it makes, the day, it makes the day work. Yeah. Um, you had said something in the other interview with Housing for Good, I thought was really important that uh, you you structure your day in a way that, you know, a lot of people, they work for themselves when they're in real estate, but they forget mm -hmm. that they're working for themselves. They, they have a very flexible schedule that can get unwieldy because they don't have any structure behind it. So you, you kind of treat it like, a, you know, like your own employee and you create your own schedule and and you make sure you're there when you're supposed to be there. But you also take time off, which I think is important. Yeah, totally. Now, flexibility can be a, a good thing or a bad thing, depending on, on how you use it. And I see a lot of people in real estate lending that get involved in this. And they, they're so excited to have that flexibility that they don't provide enough structure. And they either work themselves to death by working every hour or they don't work enough. And then they're frantic because they don't have the business that they need. Right. So did you get into this like right as you started your career 10 years ago or did you, did you, I mean, you said you transitioned, but like at what point were you, did you like quote unquote burn yourself out or did you just realize you were heading down the wrong path? At what point did you sort of, what, what triggered you to get more structured? So I think I've done both where I work myself to burnout and where I enjoy the flexibility too much and I'm not working enough. The time that I saw that I wasn't working enough was, I think it must've been like 2019 or 18. One of those years where I was just going on a lot of trips. A friend was having a bachelorette party, a birthday, some kind of celebration. So I was like, well, of course I can go on that trip. I don't have somebody telling me I can't. And that was one of the years that I saw my numbers, um, suffer a little bit. They weren't as good as I wanted them to be. So then I said, Hey, you know, I, I can't have this much fun. I can have fun, but I need to structure myself a bit more and just be as consistent as I was the previous years. And then when I really burnt out was right in the middle of 2020. And I think a lot of people saw that just because of how 
active the market was. And I was really scared to hire somebody. So luckily I found Diana. I got introduced to her through a mutual friend. And that was one of the scariest decisions that I made in my career, but it was absolutely the best decision that I ever made because she made my life so much easier. Um, I'm able to share the workload with her while also taking care of myself and vice versa. You know, we're not both working until we're burnt out. It's just a better way to balance it out but between the two of us. Uh, I think that's a uh, a good pattern. You gotta you gotta work hard, figure it out, and then along the way, um, kind of make those adjustments. Have you ever had a coach or a mentor that kind of guided you through this, or did you figure it out on your own? I've done. I had a mentor for four years before I I went independent, and then I've done coaching programs. Not necessarily a coach, but programs like Brian Buffini Peak Producers, mm-hmm. where you learn about you know doing daily pop not daily um monthly or weekly Popeyes, doing your daily phone calls, breaking bread, writing notes. So I think I've taken some of the things I know that there's no right or wrong way and there's things that work for different mm-hmm. people. But what I've realized that work works for me is just really doing and focusing the things that I enjoy. I don't enjoy cold calling, so I don't do that, but I do enjoy keeping in touch with my my sphere of influence with my friends, my past clients, with community engagement. I really enjoy that. And I found that that's what really works for my business. I'm consistent with all of those things. I farm a couple of neighborhoods and I've gotten good feedback from that. So I think I'm just, I've learned to focus on what I enjoy. And of course, there's always going to be little things that aren't as fun as other things. But I think once you focus on the things that you enjoy and that work for you, that just makes your your life and your career a lot easier and and more fun. 